the students will be able to learn about the divergent connotations of self, understand the Quranian concept of self, learn about the mystical movement of Islam, identify the need and importance of a guide in Sufi tradition and evaluate the Quran from the eyes of Sufism. The word self forms an important part of the postmodern scholarly discourse on literature, the body religion and space, seemingly unambiguous though it is difficult to define. When juxtaposing the self and or selfhood with Islam, we encounter uncertainty with what the relationship is between self and Islam. In the mystical traditions, the reference to self can signal the worldly desire against which the mystic in training must discipline him or herself to achieve a higher state of devotion to the divine. The term self is in closer perspective, is in closer correspondence with the Quranic terms nafs. The Quran has used this word many times and in many forms, probably 255 times. It is called as nafsun and in other forms like anfuskum, nafsin and nafasun. It has numerous meanings. Tajul Urus, a Sufi scholar, writes that this word is used normally to denote the total personality of a person. It also means intellect, knowledge and mind. It is used for a person as well. It is further used to express greatness, superiority, courage, resolution and punishment. It also means close relative, brotherly, etc. It is also used in the meanings of blood. Nifasan, which pours out from after the birth of a child. Nifasan also means breath and its plural is Anfasun. Ibn Faris says that its basic meaning are light and soft air. It also means a nice thing to which a person gets attracted. It also means close relative and brotherly. It is also used in the meaning of blood. Nifasan which pours out after the birth of a child. Nafasan also means breath and its plural is Anfasun. Ibn Faris says that its basic meanings are light and soft air. It also means a nice thing to which a person gets attracted. In easy language, nafs can be understood as self, soul or being. It is the essence of a human being. Sufism, Islam's great mystical movement. Sufism has born from Islam but that does not mean that the perception of God and the way to achieve God is same for both. Sufism is a mystical movement developed out of the branches of Islam. Suf actually means wool and this is because many Sufis wore woolen garments. For Islam, God is the supreme power who controls, judges, builds, breaks like a king. He is one who knows everything and is much above a human thinking. Whereas for Sufism, God is everywhere. He is the beloved and to relate to him or to reach him, one has to be absorbed in him. He is all and everything. Origin of Sufism In its earliest form, Sufi teachings stressed that an individual should give more emphasis to the spiritual aspects of Islam a result of many losing sight of their lofty goal of Islam. After a period of time, however, infamous Sufi elders introduced practices foreign to Islam which were welcomed by its followers. Practices included dancing, playing music and even consuming hashish. The scholar Ibn al-Zawazi wrote in his book Talbis Iblis about the origin of the name used by this group, saying they are called by this name 
in relation to the first person who dedicated his life to worship around the Kaaba, whose name was Sufa. According to this, those who wanted to emulate him called themselves Sufis. Ibn al-Zawazi also mentions another reason he said they would wear woolen clothes. Wool in Arabic is called Suf and woolen clothes were the sign of an aesthetic during those times. Since wool was the cheapest form of clothing and was very rough on the skin. In short, it was a symbol of the aestheticism. In any case, the word Sufi was not present at the time of Prophet Muhammad and his companions instead first appears at about 200 Hijra, 200 years after the migration of the Prophet from Makkah to Medina. The well-known scholar Ibn Talmiyyah mentions that the first appearance of Sufism was in Barsha, Iraq, where some people went to extremes in worship and in avoiding the worldly life. What exactly is Sufism? Sufism is a series of concepts and practices that range from poverty, seclusion, deception, depriving the soul, singing and dancing and is based on a mix of many different religions and philosophies such as Greek philosophies, Zoroastrianism, Buddhism, Hinduism as well as Islam. It has taken bits and pieces from different religions but it has born from Islam. That is why Sufis refer to them as Islamic mysticism. Meaning of Sufism The word Sufism is variously traced to an Arabic source Saf which means purity or to the Greek Sophos meaning wisdom. Inayat Khan, bringer of Sufism to the West in 1910, describes Sufism as a path of the heart, a path of love and a path of oneness. Although of ancient origins predating Islam, Sufism is also an active contemporary path. Ru is spirit of breath of God. Thus, this is a path of remembering God with every breath. It was mystical poet Kabir who said, Kabir talks only about what he has lived through. If you have not lived through something, it is not true. Sufism is not a path of a book and is primarily an oral tradition based on experiences, not premises. Al-Ghazali, the writings of Abu Hamid Muhammad ibn Muhammad, it is more about a way of living, a way of being in the world, but not of it. Principles of Sufism Willful and total submission to the Sheikh is probably the motto of Sufism. From a glance, it is clear that a special and complete bond is formed between the head of the Sufi order, that is, sheikh or teacher, and the murid, that is, follower. Understanding the principles of Sufism lies in understanding its basic structure. So, what is it all about? Basically, the follower gives a pledge of elegance whereby he pleads to obey the sheikh and in turn the sheikh promises to deliver the follower from every problem or calamity that may befall him. The sheikh also offers the sincere follower lucrative fringe benefits. Once a follower agrees, he is blessed and assigned a set of dhikr. These are chants. The follower is also to carry on with his life in a manner that is laid out by the Sufi order.
if a conflict arises between his duties within the order and outside duties the follower is to act upon the instructions of the sheikh in this manner the sheikh's hold over the follower becomes absolute in addition the sheikh leads the follower towards the path of tranquility peace and oneness the essence of sufism consists of uplifting our spiritual dimension to a certain degree of maturity and making it receptive to the knowledge and love of the lord and thereby imparting onto it that certain blend required for reuniting with the real the sheikh or the chief has been given the utmost importance in sufism as he is the one who shows the path of liberation to a follower need of a guide the guide or teacher is a very important person in sufism the teacher and the teachings hold an imperative bond this learner must have total faith in the teaching and the teacher per se for a learner it is important to understand and believe in the power of respect surrender will truthfulness forgiveness etc the teacher through his knowledge unchains the searcher and presents the truth in front of him he is the one of removes the bad from the surrounding and the person and leads him towards the eternal reality he is sometimes called sheik murshid or peer there are many names attached but the work is that of bringing the learner closer to his real self the path of sufism god shows different ways to a man to break his worldly dreams and come closer to him when people gets up they become a searcher a searcher who is moving on the path of truth and divinity a searcher whose journey has started and this journey would lead him to the end where the divine himself is waiting his behaviors actions thinking and even emotions change this change builds them and they begin to realize the difference between what they always felt as real and what real actually is they start to understand the real meaning of life and for what purpose they are born on this earth the core becomes stronger and stronger day by day and they are feeling the real depth they could use any path to but this path leads to one end only one reality that is divinity to become a true traveler it is important to break the chains of external unreality it is the time to become the slave and surrender oneself to the almighty the aim of sufism the aim of the sufi way is impart the zest of morality onto the heart of a believer a zest for mercy affection generosity forgiveness and gratitude sufism typifies the highest aim of human kind the objective to free each and every human being from moral defects and endure them with the attributes or moral traits of the lord and his messenger upon him blessing and peace and thereby enable them to attain to the pleasure of the almighty this entails that the ego be subjected to the authority of religion and attuned to offering deeds of worship with sincerity as befits the notion of insan this purifies the heart and stirs it in the direction of spiritual realities and ultimately to the pleasure of allah glory unto him in so far as his original essence is concerned man has been created as the best of all creation and in the best nature yet on the other hand with an ever looming potential to alienate itself from his original region 
of existence man has a tendency to defy and corrupt its otherwise incorrupt nature and become even more bewildered than animals therefore the only criterion to determine the honor and value of a man is faith that is iman and afterwards good morality akhlaq likewise the aim of the sufi way is to save people from tyranny against both themselves and others and ignorance and equipped them with the characteristics of perfection the antonym of tyranny zulm is justice adil which refers to the validity and balance of the deeds offered by a servant while the antonym of ignorance jahl on the other hand is knowledge that is ilm in order to become a truly knowledgeable person one needs to absorb both ecotric and ascetic sciences in this context ghazali says the heirs to prophets are those who possesses a combined knowledge of both exoteric and esoteric sciences the salvation of man depends on purging the bad characteristics existent in the ego and on performing deeds in accordance with the criteria laid down for valid righteous deeds amal salhi and no less on putting knowledge into practice exclusively through which one becomes a better human being in sufi terminology then implies transforming ordinary knowledge into irfan that is gnosis or wisdom in the final analysis sufism deals with theoretical and practical instructions to bring this project to life interpretation of the quran through eyes of sufis sufis claim that most verses of the quran have an outward meaning and an inward meaning solely the sufi elders understand the inward meaning on account of this sufis have introduced concepts and words that are totally foreign to the teachings of islam in the quran god almighty encourages a person to properly understand his words god tells us this is a scripture that we have revealed unto you full of blessing that they may ponder its revelations and that men of understanding may reflect whereas the sufi way is about purifying the heart and the soul since man has come to this world for trial he is afflicted until death with the presence of the ego or the lower self nafs which contains innumerable negative aspects even if one reaches the highest point of sainthood he always remains face to face and under the threat of three main obstacles the temporal world ego and shaitan he is always vulnerable to the deceiving tricks whispers and traps set by these three elements the merit of servanthood starts the moment a believer turns his heart to the lord and by eliminating the dangers caused by the three a4 mentioned elements thereby saves him from the deceptive glitters of worldly pleasures the purification of the heart and soul is an essential undertaking in rectifying the evil inclinations existent in human nature and subsequently planting the seeds of petty tuakwa therein for this region every human being is responsible for acquiring knowledge of the almighty in proportion to his personal capacity this responsibility 
also includes moving a step beyond the conventional knowledge of the almighty to attain the real knowledge of him and to complement this with righteous deeds such is the meaning of servanthood in the truest sense actualizing this kind of servanthood requires one to embark upon purifying the heart and soul and this entails a bypassing or the purging of the obstacles set by the ego and tuning all desires to the eternal such is the only way to reach the lord both here and in the hereafter the innate nature of the heart is that it is the prisint of the divine gaze in other words it is the point on which the sight of the lord is fixed as such the heart is open and receptive to divine inspiration on the condition that it is cleansed of every kind of worldly desire and selfish concerns a heart dominated by these meager desires is spiritually impure and therefore unreceptive to the inspirations and disclosures coming from the way of the lord living up to this principle does not necessarily require that one loves no person other than the god though having said that those trim plant in attaining a heart of purity at the end of this road have developed an immunity against the love of anything else other than the lord which is miswa given that common human beings however cannot entirely erase their love for things of the world from their hearts it is hoped that they will in fact benefit from these metaphorical loves as long as they do not allow them to weigh heavier than their love for the real recalling the function and status of the heart both spiritual and material will help us better appreciate the vitality of purifying it the prophet states there is a piece of flesh in human body if good then so is the whole body and if bad so the entire body becomes bad beware that this piece of flesh is the heart a well known sufi mystic and poet rumi gives a symbolic explanation of the same reality and states that when a person tries to fill an empty sack he needs to make sure that the sack does not have any holes otherwise his efforts are useless likewise rumi continues human deeds become meaningful and lead to external salvation only if performed with a purified heart for the rewards of deeds depends on the intention and the intention itself is a deed exclusive to the heart in light of this strong connection one needs to correct his intention and adorn it by means of sincerity but this is not a simple undertaking only qualified masters can guide one in the process of purifying the heart at the end of which one can attain the desired spiritual state saints train their disciplines in educating the heart helping them reach the spiritual perfection of insan where they acquire a spiritually enervated heart that feels the presence of the lord at all times reaching this set level of spiritual perfection requires the purification of the heart from all desires and objects other than the almighty a heart endowed with such quality starts perceiving subtle and deep realities and becomes the locale for the manifestation of divine names and spiritual secrets the depth of which depends on the depth of spiritual maturity the heart has acquired knowledge of the divine that is meri fatula which is to know the lord in and through the heart appears inside a heart of such caliber 
and this appearance signals the beginning of the transformation of ordinary knowledge that is ilm into real knowledge or wisdom that is irfan for sufis he who knows his soul knows his lord well friends now let us summarize what we've learned in this chapter self in islam corresponds to a term called nafs nafs is used for words like self soul or being it is seen as the essence of human being quran sees self as a permanent stable and free but its permanency does not take away the capacity for its development self has a capacity of appreciating and enjoying the higher order qualities and experience this capacity develops in the hands of itself it's right it rises and falls through its own actions the mystical movement within islam came up to be known as sufism sufism is a way to attain knowledge of the supreme it helps the being to attain the highest bliss to become one with the creator however there are differences in how islam and sufi interpret the quran but the purification of the heart and soul is of utmost important for thought for both streams of thought